Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hendy from Android Authority, and today we're going to talk about the first Android 12 beta release, and this one came with a little bit of a surprise. Oh, and before we start, let's learn what the S in Android S stands for. So we have this letter associated with the release, and every year the question is, what does that letter stand for? And I'm here to tell you, we are here to tell you that it stands for Android 12. I'm sorry, we're engineers, we deal with numbers, and we better get used to it. <laughs> All right, fair enough, Chet. Let's get started. That's right, folks. This year, we're getting the redesign that a lot of us have been asking for. The last major redesign was in 2014 with the birth of Material Design, so it's been a few years since we've seen something different. The new design is called Material U, which tells us that it's actually a branch off of Material Design instead of its own brand new thing. For the new design, Google wanted to go with something that adapts to the user as they use the device in a way that Google says makes the device feel more alive. One of the examples they gave us was the lock screen, if you pick up your phone, the lock screen lights up from the bottom, but if you hit the power button, it lights up from the side instead. This theme is apparent across the entire OS. There are little animations all over the place that make things feel a lot more reactive. Swiping notifications away on the lock screen causes the shapes to change, and it works identically in the notification panel for some nice continuity. These little touches feel less utilitarian and a little more fluid, right down to the notifications showing up at the bottom of the screen instead of the top for people with tall devices. It all actually looks pretty nice. The next part we'll talk about is the quick settings. The toggles are entirely gone and replaced with small cards. You'll see fewer cards than you did toggles, but each card is cleanly labeled, easy to understand, and contains more information than the toggle buttons did in previous versions of Android. The cards match the general shape of the media player from Android 11, so everything blends together nicely. You may also notice these little burst animations when you tap on the quick settings buttons. This is also a new theming element that is actually present on most button presses across the OS. Of course, the settings menu got a redesign as well, and yes, it's reminiscent of Samsung's One UI. Google wanted to focus on legibility, so they tweaked the spacing and size of everything so it's easier to see and to read. The overscroll looks similar, but it was also rebuilt from the ground up. If you scroll to the top, you'll see large banner text so that people with large phones can hit the topmost options without readjusting the phones in their hands. The other big thing Google added was something they're calling color extraction. Basically, you set a wallpaper and the OS identifies the prominent and complementary colors. It then uses those colors to auto-theme various parts of the OS, such as the volume rocker, quick settings, regular settings, widgets, and even places like the keyboard and stock messaging app. We're sure this will reach other apps as well as developers start to adopt it. Most of this takes place in the wallpaper and style screen that you can access by long pressing the home screen. It shows you the colors it extracts from the wallpaper after you choose one. Of course, you can override the color extraction feature and choose the colors you want as well. Yes, friends, it only took 14 years, but we have proper, if somewhat basic theming in stock Android. I don't know about you, but that makes me a happy camper. Unfortunately, the theming engine isn't live in the beta, but it should be in a future release. Some other changes include more streamlined widgets, a revamped pin entry screen on the lock screen, a wider color palette used by the OS, new app splash screens and launch animations, and a whole lot more. I refer you to the articles and videos in the description for more details. Google announced and talked about some of the new Android 12 features this year at Google I.O., so let's dig into those a little bit. One of the new features discussed at Google I.O. is the ability to use a long press of the power button to summon Google Assistant. This is very reminiscent of Bixby on older Samsung devices, but Assistant is kind of better, so we don't think as many people will mind. This is available under the gesture portion of the settings menu. Of course, a lot of the elements of the power menu, such as controlling your house lights or activating Google Pay, has been relegated to the quick settings menu, so you still have quick access to all of those things. Google also mentioned their competing service with Apple's car key. The digital car key feature is baked into the OS, just like Apple's car key. It'll use NFC to unlock your car, and you can share your digital key with a friend if needed. This feature will roll out slowly to Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy smartphones later this year. Finally, we'll talk briefly about the baked-in Android TV. TV remote in Android 12. It's really a small thing, but it lets you connect to your Android TV in the event that you lose your remote and control things directly from your phone. It doesn't seem like they added a lot of new features in the beta release, but do check out our previous video on Android 12 for the other features that they were already working on, such as haptic feedback paired with audio, gesture control tweaks, and some other stuff. 
So after the Google I.O. keynote, there was actually a second keynote for Android developers specifically that outlined some of the under the hood changes. I'll briefly touch on some of the stuff they talked about, but most of it, like the AVIF support, is in our previous Android 12 video, so we'll only mention the new stuff in this video. Some of the improvements under the hood are coming to picture in picture mode, specifically the animation of actually getting content from full view to the smaller window. This is something we'll have to wait for developers to include before we can see it in action, but it seems like it's going to be a positive change. Another new feature is the ability to natively blur content. It's actually an old feature that dates back to the first version of Android, but developers will be able to blur content now that phones have powerful enough processors to do it quickly without issue. One thing the developers talked about was the ability to transcode video from formats an app doesn't support to H.264, which most apps do support. This is an API level change that developers can use. It isn't the biggest problem, but it helps consolidate all of the various formats into a single one for developers who can't add support for everything. The Android clipboard is also getting just a little bit of a revamp. The Google engineers want users to know when an application is asking for clipboard data, and a beautiful toast message will pop up letting you know that an app application is accessing said clipboard data. Of course, there are some other smaller things as well. Check out the Android developers keynote linked in the video description below for more details. It's only about 29 minutes long and it has way more info. Some of the biggest announcements today came in the form of privacy and security. To start, Google now includes a privacy dashboard in Android 12. It gives you a clean and quick overview of which apps accessed your information and how many times. For instance, every time Google Maps uses your location, it'll show up here for you to review. The dashboard also gives you information on how your data was used. For instance, it'll tell you if a permission was used in the background and, in some cases, how long an application used a particular permission. It should work with every application on your device, even the stock ones. There is a shortcut to the permission manager in case you become concerned and want to revoke a permission. Another useful feature is the new mic and camera indicators. These indicators appear when an application actually turns your mic and camera on and remains there until they turn off. Mic and camera use is a long-standing concern of many privacy-minded folks, so hopefully this helps. You can tap the indicator at any time to find out which applications are actually using your mic or camera at that moment, and there is a quick settings button to revoke mic and camera permissions for the whole phone. This wasn't available in the beta and neither was the privacy dashboard, but we do know that it's coming. Another security feature is the addition of approximate locations. When you grant location permission, you can choose to grant a precise location like you would for navigation or approximate location for applications that don't need to know exactly where you are. Thus, you can give something like a weather application approximate location since that's all all it really needs. Finally, Google is improving and enhancing its Android private compute core. This is the function that lets things like live captions and auto replies work on your phone. The enhancements allow it to work without access to any network, further increasing privacy. Plus, it's entirely open source, so the privacy community can comb through it and see for themselves. As usual, you can check out our previous Android 12 video if you want to see the rest of the new privacy features. After reading through the press briefing, it seems Google wanted everybody to know that the purpose of this redesign was to create something that is clean, cohesive, and consistent. The ability to scroll down and see more information across all OS level apps and menus, the better spacing, the higher legibility, it all adds up to an easier to use operating system that actually flows nicely. Everything that moves got a refresh and now everything moves the same. The redesign doesn't change the look of things so much as it glues almost all the existing elements together. It's like material design in its full, final form. Some may be disappointed to see that the redesign doesn't change everything, but this is, by far, the best material design has looked in a very long time. The privacy features seem neat, and it's good that Google is finally giving people the power to monitor apps and services on their devices. This functionality was only doable through apps for many, many years. Little touches like the mic and camera indicators and the toggle that turns them off phone-wide is long overdue and appreciated. All in all, this is a reasonably good update for privacy-minded people. Of course, we'll have to wait for future betas and the potential future release to actually experience everything, so I reserve at least some judgment until then. However, this is shaping up to be among the best Android releases in recent memory. That said, whether or not you should install this and run it is entirely up to you. It's not quite as unstable as developer previews, so you should be able to get it through just fine, but it is still a beta, so you shouldn't expect flawless performance just yet. If that's a risk you're willing to take, then by all means, 
have fun. Oh, and one last thing, the Easter egg for Android 12 hasn't been revealed yet. This beta, at least on my Pixel 4 here, still has the Android 11 Easter egg. I guess we'll have to learn more about that one at a later date. And that about does it for this one, folks. If you want to learn more, I encourage you to check out all of the videos and articles linked in the video description below, especially Luke's excellent overview of the Google I.O. keynote. As always, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.